Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the creative process that I took while creating this stone. On this one, I knew that I wanted to do like purples and teals, and I wanted to do a more detailed stone. I also show in this video where I changed my mind about a color choice, so I had to go back and remove some dots and replace them with a different color. So I go over that process as well. Since I knew going into this stone that I wanted to do a more detailed design, I didn't make sure to put a lot of guidelines on there. For me, it just makes the creative process a lot faster as it's just one less thing that I have to worry about. For the guidelines, I just use a chalk pencil and I am using a stencil that I get from Happy Dotting Company and a compass to put the lines on there. I also used a Happy Dotting Company mold for the stone as well and I'll put links to all of that stuff down below for everyone. My main goal going into this one was just to have fun and just to create something new and just kind of play around with a couple of different ideas using some things that I've used before but then just kind of tweaking them and just seeing what I could come up with and I knew I was going to do some type of color blocking where I'm going from like a whole bunch of teals to a whole bunch of purples to teals and back and forth. I also knew going into this one that I wanted to have a lot of points on this mandala in order to do that one of the easiest things to do is just to build out the center section a lot. The more rows I put on the center section and the more I push it out before I start doing the larger dots gives me more space to be able to fit more larger dots around the center section creating more points on the mandala. Once I get this section to a distance that I'm happy with, I can then just go in and start adding details and kind of creating that final ring that's going to be like a nice accent for me to start building off of. So I decided to do like these little white dots and then just take a needle to just drag that paint in between, creating this nice little swipe between the two purple dots. And then I was going to start bringing in the teal. But at this point, I realized that the white dots in that first row were driving me crazy. I did not like them. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep going and see if it will grow on me. And I started placing my larger dots and I realized that, yeah, no, I can't. I can't do it. I don't. It was just, it, I don't know, something about it was just driving me absolutely crazy. Looking back at it now, it doesn't drive me crazy anymore. But at the time, I just couldn't do it. So I waited for that paint to dry and then I was able to just go in with a toothpick and just kind of pop those dots off. And then I did have to go back and touch up a few spots with some black paint. Once that dried, I was able to just go in and I decided to do more of the light purple dots. and ended up liking this more. And then when I'm watching this video now, I'm like, well, I don't know. I kind of I kind of like the white too. So they would have been fine either way. But for whatever reason, I decided that I really just wanted to change it to the lighter purple. Next, I knew I was going to do like a whole bunch of tiny walking the dots. So I have the smallest nail dotting tool that I have. And I'm just slowly just walking around each of these dots, creating like this really small trail of dots that are just slowly getting smaller as I work my way around. And I leave myself just enough enough space in between each of these petals to put a little swipe so I ended up doing like a darker purple dot and just dragging just a little thin line of paint in between each of those petals creating the first row of this mandala once I completely go around this section doing this, I know that I'm just going to start bringing in a lot more of the purple. So I decided to go in with like these big purple dots on top of all of them. And then I was like, I think I'm just going to walk the dots around these and just kind of go from there. But then I decided, you know what? I think instead of doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and just put two big purple dots on top of this and just build this section out more just to kind of really change things up and just kind of just see what I could come up with and I ended up doing like this little triangle shape and this is my favorite part. Now I have to figure out a way to fill in all this space that I created. So I decided to start with the lower purple dot and just start with some light purple and just slowly walk the dots around that. I like the shape that it was giving me and the look. So then I'm trying to decide now if I want to start working on the top three dots or if I want to continue this pattern going around the side with maybe like another row of rocking the dots around here. And I eventually just decided to just kind of continue the walking the dots, but just moving my way up, creating like this unique shape and design around this part of the mandala. And then it left me with this really unique space in between those two petals. And that's when I was like, okay, now I'm really not sure what I'm going to do from here. I really couldn't come up with anything. I had a couple ideas, maybe doing some swipes, different things, but then I was like, 
well maybe that space just needs to be like a negative space on the stone so i just kind of just left it as is and just started working on the outside of the mandala that way i can just kind of see the mandala build out and then i can go back later and always add stuff to that empty space if i want to or if i feel like it needs something extra but maybe in the end it's just going to end up being negative space and that's going to be totally fine so from here i was just like i really want to build out this petal more kind of define it and separate it from whatever i'm going to do from the next section so i decided to go in with these three triangle white dots to kind of push this area out a little bit more and to kind of create that really unique space in between that i quickly just fell in love with so i wanted to really define that area a little bit more so i went in with just a very thin white swipe doing that just really helped define that area and it created this very unique space for me to go in and put these really large till dots and with these i loaded them up with a lot of paint and then i can just take a needle to kind of smooth them out to get rid of any peaks because i do want my paint a lot thicker here because the stone is starting to curve off to the side and i don't want my dots to be dripping down the side so once i created those very large dots i then wanted to bring in both the colors together instead of doing just all till in the section i'm bringing in some of the purple with some walking the dots just kind of tying the whole piece together and on this one i have to be like very careful and work very slowly because i'm on the edge of the stone and I had to wait for all the other paint to dry so I could do this because I end up putting my pinky on the stone. That's a trick I've learned that just really helps me stabilize my hand when I'm doing walking the dot, especially on the sides of stones. So I always have to make sure that that paint is completely dry before I do something like this. And I have to be careful as I work my way around because eventually I will get back to the wet paint. Even though there's a risk of dropping the stone and or putting my finger in wet paint, I end up just getting a better result, especially when I'm working on the sides. If I can just hold the stone and just kind of rotate it to where I am doing the walking the dots, it just makes it easier for me and ends up being more symmetrical. For me, the risk ends up being worth the reward. Once I finished up these petals with a row of white walking the dots, I knew it was time for the top dots and I decided to go with just a lighter shade of the colors to kind of just lighten up the piece and just kind of highlight it. It adds a lot of depth to it as well. So I ended up sticking with that. I kind of played around with the idea of putting some of the teal dots on top of the purple and vice versa, but I just, in the end, I really just wanted to just lighten these up and just kind of highlight these as they are. Then when I got to the very last row, where I had a mix of like teal and purple, I decided that, okay, yeah, now I'll bring in some more purple on this side, starting off with the lighter purple and then just going in with lighter shades for all the top dots. And it gave it this really cool effect, just kind of tying it all together, highlighting that center part. And I decided in the end that I was not gonna go back and do anything extra in that negative space area that I was definitely going to leave it as negative space it just kind of creates a lot of depth there and it really just makes that center part pop here is the finished stone overall i really just enjoyed the way that it turned out and i hope you enjoyed this video if you could please like and share it and comment down below anything you would like to see in future videos and thanks for watching